and now I've got a color for my uh, values that are going up the side value as well as my rectangle here um, so say I wanted to piece this together with some words some actual text or strings um, I could do side length and add a plus down here so now I'm kind of uh, pushing these two things together so I've got my side length that changes and updates every time I click on this okay uh, if I wanted to find the area uh, I've already got the variable declared up here so my area of my square and uh, the square for this one is going to be just the side times the side so I run that and nothing different on the screen well I still have to display that I still have to write out the text and have it show up on the screen so I can use kind of the same template as before Oops. I'm used to that control T from processing still being our auto format I think it's what is it up and tab here um, this time I want not the side length but the area of the square and my variable isn't the side this time, right? It's uh, area of square. And this is where um, it really helps to start naming your variables what they are. Because if somebody else took over my code or was looking at my code to help fix it, if all my variables are A, B, C, D, it, it's really hard to figure out what they actually mean there. So now I've got 150. Beautiful. And it's just those two values multiplied together for each of these. And I can even add a bit more if I want, where I want it to go back to text. I could do that too. I think I'm going to have to be a bit smaller on my size here. So I'm going to move both of these over. And I'm going to lower the text size just so it fits on the screen a bit better. There we go. So this is for a square. Now you have to do it for a circle, for an ellipse, uh, which shouldn't be too much of a change for this. But you have to think your your area of your square is going to change to area of a circle, area of an ellipse. The formula is going to be different, right? And if you need to remember, if I was in class, I'd usually ask, okay, what's the area of a circle? And everybody knows there's pies and things in there. Uh, but Google's really handy, right? Like you can look up and as part of coding programming here, you can look up stuff that you need to know. Um, so you've got pi uh, r squared here for the area of the circle. One cool thing, I know this works in processing and I assume it works, yeah, uh, in um, uh, P5JS here, is you can use capital P, capital I. Um, now this isn't obviously the area of the square, but uh, it's taking that 3.14 multiplying by the side. Okay, got a lot of decimal points here. Um, one thing you can do, you can look up into this. How can I reduce this to just like one decimal point or two decimal points? So I don't have like a million decimal points here. Uh, and you can do that for the assignment as a bit of a challenge portion for it. But hopefully this helps kind of make sense of this and this is a place to start. And go back into the assignment, take a look at the requirements, send me any questions you have. You can contact me over email or you can contact me uh, on that Microsoft Teams. That Microsoft Teams is really good because you can share the screen. Uh, I can take a look at your code as well from that end. So uh, let me know if there's any issues. All the best. Stay safe out there.